So today's live is going to address grief and loss. And I will specifically talk about grief in terms of losing someone to death. But next week, we will talk more about loss that can be loss of uh, loss of a family because of divorce or separation, loss of um, maybe your your child's health or your husband's health or your own health. So we will talk more about that in next week's live. But today I'm going to give you three reasons, or I always say reasons, but uh, three ways to really support someone who is suffering through grief and loss that happen through death. So I will just start by saying I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you joined us. And this time of year, it's December 4th, is really very difficult for those who have lost loved ones due to death. I mean, any time is difficult, but especially this Christmas season, because that's when you, um, I, I think most people really grieve the hardest. You know, you remember past memories and, and things like that. So number one, the number one thing that you can do to help support someone who's suffering through grief and loss, the number one thing you can do is just to be present with them. So everything we talk about in Connect Point Moms starts with you and you being aware and you uh, just giving your full presence. That means not just in body, but also in mind and in spirit. So if number one is to be present with that person, I don't mean just sitting with them. I mean actually thinking about being with them um, instead of thinking like, oh, how long is this going to take? Or boy, this is really uncomfortable. Or uh, what's for dinner tonight, right? So just when you find your mind wandering, just bring it back and say, God, just keep me here in this moment with this person. Because there's nothing that you can do or buy or even say that could take the place of you just being present with a person who's grieving. Next week, I'll talk more about the loss that our family has suffered. And it was a, a loss through uh, like a custody battle, really. And the best thing, the most helpful, kind, loving thing that people could do for us whenever we were suffering that loss was just to say, this sucks and I love you and I'm sorry. And we would just cry together or they would hold us while we cried. And um, that was the most comforting thing for us in that moment. So number one is just to be present. Now, if you can't be physically present, like I have a very good friend who just lost her mom. She lives on the other side of the country and I can't be there with her uh, physically, but emotionally I can be there for her. And even just sending a heart emoji as I pray for her so she knows that I'm thinking of her uh, is helpful. So um, so that's number one, be present. Number two is ask questions. So, so often we stay away from people who maybe not consciously, but we tend to avoid people who are suffering from grief and loss because we don't know what to say to them and it's uncomfortable for us and, and we don't want to say the wrong things, but you can ask them, are you willing to talk about what happened? You know, I'd love to hear your your side of, of or, you know, in your own words, what happened, because maybe it was something really tragic that was in the news and, and you've heard it from the news or you heard it from other people, but you can say in your own words, would you be willing to talk about it? And the reason we want to do that is because when you're grieving, you want to talk about those things. You might not even know that you want to talk about those things, but in order to to grieve well and grieve healthily, you need to be able to talk about your feelings. Like I said, next week, I'm going to talk more about personally what happened in our home and our family. But I can tell you that one of my sons has said, um, I don't really like to think about it because it's just like ripping the wound open and I would just rather pretend it's not there. And then we were kind of like, oh, oops, because we we do need to talk about it. We do need to think about it. And when you ask people questions, sometimes you think, oh, I don't want them to feel sad, but they're already feeling sad. So it allows them to kind of get their feelings out. Some people are uncomfortable talking about their own feelings, so they might turn it to you. Uh, 
So has this ever happened in your life? Have you ever lost a loved one? Tell me about your situation. And I would say as tempting as it is for us to say, well, when I went through this, it's more helpful for the person who's grieving to say something like, I remember how, how awful it was for me, but I'd really like to hear about how you're dealing with it right now. So Jill has a question. Does it matter whether or not you can manage your own motions while letting them talk about it? Yeah. Um, obviously, Jill, everything we talk about at Connect Point Mom starts with you because you can only give what you have, but it's okay to be sad and, uh, and uncomfortable and say that. I, I love you to the grieving person, I love you and I want to be here for you. And this is hard for me too. And I just, um, I'm, you know, sharing their grief. I mean, the Bible even tells us in John 11, 35, Jesus wept, Jesus wept, Jesus, fully God, fully man. And he even grieved. So he grieved with Martha and Mary who had lost their, their brother Lazarus. So it's okay if it's difficult for you and you just say that. Um, recently, uh, and again, I'll talk about this more next week about someone who has lost, uh, but not due to death. So a friend of mine was talking about her divorce and the children who are going back and forth. And just as she was talking about it, she got teary eyed and I got teary eyed and we just hugged. And I just said, I'm so sorry. This sucks. I, I know how this feels and, and, and it's and it's awful. And even if you don't know how it feels, you can still hug them and, and say, I'm so sorry this is happening for you. So first is be present. Second is ask questions so that the person who's grieving can actually get their feelings out and process their emotions. You, you don't have to fix it. You can't fix it. Number one, they're not broken. They're grieving, uh, but just being there. And then um, number three, Sorry, Jill has one more question. I was thinking this morning about it, and then also, sorry. oh, yes, Jesus. Okay, and then my mom, just as long as the focus remains on the other person, yes. And that's, um, it's tempting for us to want to share our uh, similar experiences, and the person might even turn it to you because they're uncomfortable with it being on them. So you say something like I had mentioned, uh, yes, I remember when this happened to me, but how, how are you dealing with it? Um, good point. Thank you. So then first is be present. Second is ask questions. And then third is offer to help in some specific way. So often we say, hey, just call me if you need anything or let me know or, you know, I, I can do whatever you need. But if a person is grieving a loss, a death of a loved one, the last thing they can really think about is what they need. You know, that I don't know what I need. I'm being pulled in a million different directions. I'm grieving. So if you say, Hey, I'm going to bring you a meal tomorrow. Um, hey, I'm going to come over and help you with your laundry. Uh, we're in Las Vegas, so we really don't need to shovel snow, but this is the time of year that you can just go and shovel someone's driveway. If that's a need in your area, maybe you can mow the grass here in Las Vegas for someone. Uh, maybe you just say, hey, I'm going to come over and take your kids instead of, you know, hey, if you ever need a babysitter, let me know. Rather just say, I'm going to come over on Saturday and, and take your kids for a couple hours. Will that work for you? So offer something specific so that even if they say, no, thanks, I want my kids with me that day, or, uh, you know, I don't need my grass mode. They'll know that by you offering something specific, if they do have a specific need, they'll know that you'll be willing to, to help meet that. So those were three ways to help comfort someone dealing with uh, loss and grief specifically due to death, but any, like I said, next week, we're going to be talking about loss due to other, um, other losses. There's so many of them and, uh, we need to be able to recognize them and just value them for what they are. So I hope this was helpful and encouraging for you. If you are grieving and suffering through a loss or if a loved one is, and um, I appreciate you spending your time with me. I hope, like I said, I hope this was helpful for you to help you connect better with those in your life. Please go visit my website, connectpointmoms.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, search out our Facebook group, Connect Point Moms, and join us so that you can watch these videos live and comment and get your questions answered. And 